the extraordinary things of this, about this whole experience was the number of my friends who said things to me like, You're crazy. How can you do that? <laughs> it's so beautiful. You're crazy if you touch anything. For me, it was a terrific renewal. I thought it was a career ender. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of our concept of good taste has to do with colors that don't clash, that go together. Not necessarily matching, but there is a kind of canon of colors that go together. Not in this room. This room would be horrible for a lot of people. I design hotels, I design these like multi-million dollar residences and stuff like that. I've never seen a client take something that I've based a whole career on, and she throws it all out the window and starts again. <laughs> In the beginning, I was an ideological modernist and had only modern furniture and only modern pictures, and I couldn't conceive of any variation from that. But it didn't take me very long to realize that mixing things up would be a lot of fun. But after I sold the last modern pictures, there was something very dry and dispirited about the neoclassical furniture with the Renaissance art. I wanted to change over, but I knew that I did not want to do mid-century modern, because that been there, done that, wouldn't begin to describe. And I knew I didn't want to do deco. So I didn't quite know what was out there waiting for me, but I knew there had to be something. Two years it took me of chewing this over to work up my courage and then I called Jim. I owned a little tiny store on 18th Street, and I'd become friends with her son, and... Should somebody mention who he is? Oh, your son's Michael Diamond from the Beastie Boys, otherwise known as Mike D. <laughs> somebody said to me, have you seen Rolling Stone? And there they are on the cover of Rolling Stone. And I start <laughs> reading. And the first half of the article is about like, you know, how they're all grown up. Mike now likes modernist furniture. And you know, he has his friend, Jim, who's his furniture pimp. Like I would show him really, really rare stuff. And he'd be like, oh yeah, that's a Johnson and Kelly lamp. There's this, there's that. I was like, how do you know about this stuff? And he said, well, my mother was a decorator. Even though I had been in the decorating business for years and years, I had long since retired, I was out of touch with the market, I didn't know what was out there, and I did not want to do any of the scut work. I was approaching 40 quick, and I thought that I knew exactly what it was that I did for a living. I remember the first things I showed you, you were like, it's not what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even it's remember that. I, want. <laughs> I know we did have a little few false starts. And I remember thinking like, oh, I don't know shit about what it is that I do right now. I really don't. Because I had become so stagnant within the idea of taste and like what it is. Generally what happens is, is that people furnish and they don't furnish on the idea of taking something and you know using it in an artistic way. It's the most joyous place to live. It's impossible to be depressed in this room. <laughs>